We were looking into the sports world's most scorned major market with longtime Bay Area executive Andy Dolish. Plus, the NFL schedule could get completely rearranged, and MLB's most criticized umpire is out of a job. It's Wednesday, May 29th. I'm Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. Angel Hernandez has been called out. The MLB umpire retired after reaching a settlement with MLB following a loss in a legal dispute against the league. Hernandez, who was born in Cuba, alleged racial discrimination against MLB back in 2017 because he had not been tapped to work a World Series since 2005 and had been passed over for crew chief jobs. Last year, the Second Circuit Appeals Court said that Hernandez had failed to establish a statistically significant link between racial or ethnic identity and MLB's promotion and hiring practices. Regardless of the merits of his case, there's a simpler explanation for why MLB was keeping Hernandez out of the World Series, and that's that he was bad at his job. This was something discussed openly by MLB players, and the internet can provide you countless examples of batters getting called out by Hernandez on pitches that are a foot out of the strike zone. The fact that Hernandez lasted for as long as he did as automated pitch tracking made his issues more obvious and quantifiable is a testament to the umpires union. But with the minor leagues experimenting with automated pitch calling, the Angel Hernandezes of the world may be a dying breed. We don't know if umpires will ever be fully replaced by machines, but we're in an era where they can't fall too far behind the robots if they want to keep their jobs. The NFLPA is finalizing a proposal that would remake the NFL offseason. Currently, the NFL has voluntary spring camps. Those run until around mid-June, and then players are off again until late July when camps open again in preparation for the season, which starts in September. Under the players' proposal, which could kick in as soon as next year, there would be no spring camp, and preseason camps would start in late June or early July, giving the players almost half a year off, with no start and stop in the offseason. According to NFL media, a majority of players are in favor of the switch. However, any such change will have to be approved by the league, and that could mean that the NFL asks for something in return. That counteroffer could be an 18th regular season game, which would take the place of one preseason game. However, the players might want more than a reconfigured offseason for an 18th game. Their counter could include an extra bye week. That domino could lead to another one, which is the NFL moving its entire season one week earlier so that the Super Bowl lands on President's Day weekend. Put that all together and you would have no spring camps, preseason camps starting in June, two preseason games, the regular season starting one week earlier and lasting two weeks longer with one extra game, and the Super Bowl landing on a three-day weekend. Joined now by a longtime sports executive and president of Dolish Consulting, Andy Dolish. Welcome, Andy. Uh, great to be with you, on. Great to have you on. So your resume includes executive and C-level positions with the Oakland A's, San Francisco 49ers, Golden State Warriors, Memphis Grizzlies, among others. Of those three Bay Area teams, you know, the Warriors stayed in the area, but went across the Bay to San Francisco. The Niners usually don't get lumped in with the teams that moved, but they are about an hour away from San Francisco. Yeah, they're not they're in, in San, San Francisco. Clara. They're in Santa Clara. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they, we had the uh, growing NFL tradition of, you know, naming yeah, yourself you from a Buffalo, place where you don't actually play. No, are you the Dallas? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're certainly not the New York Giants or Jets. Um and, uh, you know, the Raiders, of course, left. Uh, the A's are on their way to Sacramento, presumably headed to Vegas after that. When you think about that whole Bay Area story of every every team has is, is gone somewhere, um, do you see it as, as one story or is it, you know, each team's got its own little journey? What really struck me, so I'm an East Coaster and worked for teams there in the NBA, National Hockey League with the Caps uh, in the old NASL days in Washington, D.C., Philadelphia 76ers. And when I first came to the Bay Area, when the Haas family purchased the Oakland A's for the unheard of price of $11 million from <laughs> Charlie <laughs> Finley, and there's a lot of crappy second basemen that make more than $11 million a year right now. <laughs> Um, yeah. I, I didn't know the Bay Area. I didn't know the West mm -hmm. Coast. But somehow I was lucky enough to understand that it's not just Oakland or San Francisco or San Jose. And there's so many different locations in the Bay Area that people confuse. And we yeah. took it because the A's were at a low ebb in 1980. Finley had sold off all of his great players. Uh, we had to start a new the Giants were actually talking about relocating to Denver or Tampa Bay at that time yeah. because Candlestick was losing its uh, 
its attraction based upon the cold weather in the summer. Short answer, we looked at Northern California as our market and people don't necessarily look at it that way. Like you use the example of the Warriors, well, they've just gone across the Bay to a brand new or relatively brand new home. It's still the Bay Area, but it's not in Oakland. Uh, Raiders move out of state to another city. A's, well, we'll see how it ends up, but September 26th of this year, last game after, I think, 56 years in Oakland, play in mm -hmm. Sacramento for several years until Vegas becomes a reality or a mirage, one of the two. Yeah. Um, so there is a level of confusion and sports fans, and I think this is a positive, Owen, don't root for all the teams. If you're a Giants fan, you don't root for the A's. If you were a Raider fan, you're not rooting for the Niners. Um, and so, you know, Warriors, you didn't have Sacramento at that time. You had L.A. as the ultimate uh, competitor. So that is a positive. But now in the Oakland side, and I think Oakland will be the last one footprint site to have three teams all playing at, you know, that facility now have none as of the 26th yeah. of September. And we can talk about money all you want. What I like to think about is sports fans invest their heart, mind, and soul. And as we have in the background here, swag, right? They spend some yeah. money and it's usually introduced by a family, father, grandfather, grandmother, and it stays in the family. Um, so that's going to be hard to abide that the market has lost three teams. Now the focus is on Oakland, but I view it that the market of Northern California mm -hmm. or the San Francisco Bay area has lost these teams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when, when a team moves, um, how long should we expect them to to you know develop a new fan base? Like you said, you know it's often a generational thing. You know, you you go to games with your parents or you know your 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 friends or whoever, and um, you know the can we expect teams the, these days to kind of you know take that excitement of a new team and just run with a fan base or, or you know how long does it take to I kind of build up I wish we had a time a machine Owen and we could crank it up to 2026 or beyond so let's just take the warriors as an example they leave oakland mm -hmm. after 356 consecutive sellouts at the oakland arena that yeah. still blows my mind yeah. And they transferred the magic of Steph Curry and Clay Thompson and Draymond. Right. They still have that so dynasty core going. Nothing was really lost there in terms of their fan base. Niners leave San Francisco, go to Santa Clara. And for a few years, you know, they suffered a bit because they were not playing well on the field. And now, you know, they're a Super Bowl participant with a bright future with uh, Brock Purdy, right? Uh, who wants to draft yeah. Brock Purdy? He can't play. He's Mr. Irrelevant. And he's not irrelevant anymore. Uh, the Raiders, I think we have to wait. Um, now, got off to a good start because of their new stadium. But if they're not good in two or three years, Vegas is a play big, win big, go home market. So we'll mm -hmm. see. The A's, yeah. I happen to have a deep-seated love for the franchise, having spent 14 years there and with uh, great colleagues and magnificent ownership. We did really well um, mm -hmm. and drew lots of fans, uh, not 3,800, but 38,000. Um, yeah. And, you know, Sacramento. That's in like the Bash Brother days, Sacramento, right? Sacramento, good ballpark, but it's a minor league park. How are they going to do with 81 games of bad baseball in a convertible dome stadium in Vegas? I don't think well, uh, but yeah. that's just my view. So it's how deep your love is of the particular franchise. You'll have some Raider fans go, I'm flying to Vegas. Well, sure. okay, but it's only eight or nine games. Baseball? It's a Tuesday through Friday series and both teams are terrible. You're not flying any place to watch them and you're not even going to see them play in Oakland. Yeah, right. And I think that 
differential of game numbers is huge because yeah nine games in vegas you, you can probably sell that out um and yeah maybe you know a mariners fan once a year once every couple of years will say you know what let's go to vegas make a trip out of it go see absolutely, a game absolutely absolutely but they're not going to do that every time no i i mean you look at um you know two teams that are a combined let's say 40 and 90 in the future um, that's not the way sports fans work. Um, yeah. You know, you want the the bottom line of sports ownership now that it's morphed to the billions, not the hundreds of millions. Is you want to win a championship with the best athletes that you can possibly put on your team with a great fan base, and that's what the business is. Not I'm going to be terrible mm -hmm. for four years until we move to Vegas, so I can generate revenue, according to John Fisher, so I can generate revenue to pay for the players to be competitive or not that's not the game plan i'd want for las vegas yeah and it's not one where we should necessarily trust him because <laughs> uh he's been you know selling off his players you know the moment they get a little bit pricey for long before you know this this vegas plan really came to fruition um i'm wondering if you think a fisher owned team was ever going to stay in Oakland. Because for a long time, I thought, you know, it looks like they're really trying to stay. And now I start to look back on it, especially in light of the comments by Sue Kim, the Valley's chairman, who said, you know, the truth is that MLB was trying to get them to stay. The A's, yeah. you know, they, they had one foot out the door for a long time. Um, and it, you, you've heard, I've seen quotes from, you know, Oakland council members saying like, they keep moving the goalposts on us. You know, we, they ask for this and we get it. And they ask, you know, then they say, oh, that's not enough. could have been done. I mean, it could have been yeah. not the perfect place, but, you know, they had a facility that they could have started to build and then they switch pitched them on Vegas. I believe it's a net asset play, which sounds kind of boring, but John mm -hmm. Fisher bought the Oakland A's 19 years ago for $185 million. Today, even with the lack of quality, um, it's worth, according to sports economists, neither of which we are, right? I don't think we are. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no. Worth $1.2 yeah. And some have predicted when they have their new convertible domed spherical armadillo or whatever it'll be called at that time, <laughs> uh, it'll double in value. That is why I think John is going down this path I and many, many others believe that he already could have been in a new wonderful ballpark at the Oakland Coliseum or even at Howard Terminal, rebuilt the franchise and got back to drawing a lot of fans. Uh, the argument that the mm -hmm. Bay Area is not big enough for two teams is not factual. And I could point to years that the A's and the Giants literally outdrew New York, Chicago and L.A. And people say that can't be right. Well, look it up. It was right. So this elected officials uh, may very well be right, but as you look at the strength of any city, it's teamwork, leadership, and trust between the league, the owner, and the elected officials. And what do we have in Oakland? Zippity doo dah. Yeah. They have never been yeah. on the same page at any time vis-a-vis -vis the A's. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. And um, yeah, and I just wonder if if Fisher was if Fisher wanted to be on the same page. It feels like because, like you said, there were deals to be made there, whether it was at Howard Terminal or the Coliseum site, or I mean, Laney College. Obviously, they needed the permission. <laughs> yeah, of they Laney needed College, to have Laney which, be you know, involved whoops. in the discussions. That would have been right. Yeah, someone maybe should have asked them a little earlier. Um, but but yeah, and it just feels like Fisher just wants you know the the best handout. He can get, you know, he got his nine acres from Bally's. He wants, he got his, you know, three hundred and was eighty million from from Nevada, and and that. And he was is, allowed I don't know if it's the best walk. deal, but it was he the was cheapest deal. To walk from the original relocation fee of somewhere between three and four hundred million that would have accrued to the league and other owners, and the commissioner said, "Ah, uh, you know what? You're fine. You don't have to pay a relocation fee." Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I'm kind of banging the Mexico City drum myself. The elevation well, is a real challenge there. Yeah, but 21 uh, but million everything people, else. I'll mark it yeah. to them. And you and I are announcing that Fernando Valenzuela has just been named president of our franchise. I'll take that. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's 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 an opportunity unlike any any. Yeah, there's America. complexity. Like, I but, mean, I've worked in Vancouver yeah. for the Grizzlies. And if you're in another country, even though you're in a cooperative environment, it's still different and it's travel. Mm -hmm. But wow, I mean, you think about the Latino Hispanic influence on baseball in the last decade. I just yeah. nothing against the other U.S. cities that are talking, but to me, it's not even close. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just like population wise, it's you know you're, you're yeah, yeah can't Broadcast, get anywhere near that. Sponsors, with, with the global it's market. a global city. It's a global country. You can get there easily. Yeah. Um, so that's where I, that's where yeah. I go along with Oakland. Yeah, and so yeah, just on that that Oakland point, let's say you know John Fisher contacts you in secret maybe he's not going to contact me but time. joe lacob of the warriors has talked uh, about okay. it okay and vivek yeah. ranadive of the kings has talked about it mm -hmm. so they're out there and yeah right and ranadive you know is uh reportedly hoping that he just gets to keep the a's because maybe <laughs> things fall through in vegas and he says well yeah. you know i, I don't think around. possessions nine tenths of the law even in professional <laughs> sports yeah. right um uh if if John Fisher, you know, got in touch and said, "Hey, all I want to do is sell this team for the most money I can get in a few years," um, do I do I take the Vegas deal, or do I try to make it work in Oakland? What's what do you? I don't even to... Owen. I'm totally prejudiced towards Oakland based upon history. To me, mm. it is Oakland with a new ballpark at the Coliseum. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. Howard, okay, at the Howard Terminal could yeah. be done, but the complexity of building on the sixth busiest port in the country is not easily done. The entrance and exit, you'd have to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to do that in a constantly gridlocked 880 for people that know it. The Coliseum has it all. Um, it has massive public transportation in BART, the roads, the parking but it needs a new stadium. And the bottom yeah. line of that, uh, when I talk to people that build these things for a living, might be eight or 900 million, not 1.x plus billion. And you don't mm -hmm. need right. a dome. Yeah, yeah, and you don't want a dome. No, you want <laughs> you the got beauty. And I, not, and I rip out, you know, Mount Davis becomes Absolutely. something that's buried in the rubble when the stadium is taken to the ground. Uh, we'll leave it there. Andy Dulloch, really enjoyed the chat. Thanks so much Thank for joining you. us Thank you. This is show. a story that will never end, so look forward to talking with you in the future. That's it for today. Rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts, and throw us a like if you're on YouTube. Thanks for listening. We will see you tomorrow.